Hello. Hey, Ragnar. Hey, that's our premiere, our very first show. I'm very excited to be one of the guardians of the M65 governance to be with you, Christian. We, we need to have some kind of super guests. superhero outfits, though, Ragnar. I mean, to, you know, to make it <laughs> all official or matching bracelets yeah. or something, you know, something. But uh, well, yeah. welcome to the first official episode of Guardians of Microsoft 365 Governance. Uh, we have the convenient hashtag of go m365 gov uh, you have to have the hashtag or or you're not legit oh yes oh yes that's something yeah. what we what we have to share immediately yeah yep our our goal this in this monthly live stream show is to bring to the techie gurus audience and of course the broader community everything and anything important about governance within the microsoft 365 ecosystem and each month, as we have today, we'll have guests, uh, some pre-recorded interviews from various events around the world. So Ragnar and I both travel a lot and attend at events and speak oh, at yes. events oh, yes. and a lot on the, the governance topic. Uh, and we'll also share relevant updates and product news, uh, industry news about all things governance. So uh, maybe we start with some introductions very quickly mm -hmm. for folks that don't know me. My name is Christian Buckley. I'm a Microsoft Regional Director as well as a, a Microsoft 365 uh, Apps and Services MVP with a concentration on SharePoint and Teams and Ragnar. Yes. So pretty much the, the same M65 Apps and Services, no Regional Director, but also working for Rancor, leading the global partner sales team. Yeah. And we've been doing this for a long time. Uh, we're both at Rencore now. We are both uh, former uh, Microsoft people. I, I, do you have it on your profile, the X Microsoft? Still, you know, proud of the fact yeah, that I was at the beginning of what is now Office 365. So a lot of yep. things in common. But by, yep. by the way, we have other wonderful colleagues here from Rencore, like Pia. Hey, hey waving Pia. to Pia. Wonderful. Thanks for being here. And please, the other. Um, audience and visitors, please tell us where you're from, from which uh, country. And if you're also here snowed, because looking outside, it's freezing cold, like minus 10 and snowy. We get, we get here snow last night again. Yeah. Yep. So I'm, I'm here in uh, Salt Lake City area. Yeah. And so we've got yet another snow. I don't know how much snow we got up at the ski resort. So there's something like last weekend, four to five feet of snow. Mm hmm but right. i've but but i don't i don't want to spoil too much but we have a guest here joanne and she is also suffering a, a lot of coldness so let's see what she tells about snow but it's not about a weather forecast show we are going to to go deep today about one of the hottest topics in the industry going directly into ai co-pilot governance and compliance and we are very excited and very happy that we have one of the leading industry experts Two he's Joanne, Joanne Klein and also David Driver sure. here with us. And I don't want to spend more words. I just put both on stage. Welcome to our show, Joanne, and welcome, David. Hi, Hello. everyone. Hello. Hi. <laughs> Maybe both of you could introduce yourselves. Joanne first. Sure. Hi, um, I'm Joanne Klein. I hail from Western Canada, so I might win the How Cold Is It contest today. I think it's warmed up to minus 23 Celsius, minus 33 with the wind chill. Wow. So yeah, not much snow, uh, but very cold. So happy oh to be God, here on the first inaugural uh, show. Um, I, I work in this purview compliance space all of the time with my customers. I am owner operator of my own consulting company um, and all of my customers are in this space. So happy to be here and talk about this topic. Wonderful. And David. Hi, everyone. Uh, David Drever, uh, Associate Director of Productivity and Microsoft 365 MVP. Uh, like Joanne, I very much focus on the compliance space. Um, anything purview, that's where I live. Defender, same thing there. Um, and I think, you know, I think it's a toss up uh, between me and Joanne. Like right now, it's not so bad right now, but the same temperature as Joanne. But earlier this week, we're down to minus 40. For those of you on Fahrenheit, that's also minus 40. So, um yeah so it's it's been, it's been a little chilly um you know ragnar your temperature a little balmy for us right now we're, yeah. we're... <laughs> minus oh, 10 yes. uh. no, that's nothing that's still short weather so you know it's, that's uh, for puppies yeah. <laughs> well I'm, I'm wearing shorts today because we're only at 29 or or uh yeah 28 degrees fahrenheit so yeah. uh it's snowing though but <laughs> yeah <laughs> 
Well, thank you both for for joining. And I know that uh, so we're we'll jump right into it. So I know that you just went live with your new podcast, Compliance Unplugged. Uh, in that first episode, I think you've just done the one. Have you done a second episode yet? Is it what's the yeah. monthly? Yeah, that's our intent. Yeah, we're we're still we're still working out all the all the uh, you know the the squeaky wheels and the bugs and stuff like that. But yeah, we're we're hoping to have a, a monthly. I think at the, at the at the least. Yeah. Well, hopefully you provide uh, some links as we're talking, like out so people can find your show. And I know Absolutely. each of you are also your blogs that you're writing about it. So let's share all that information. So in that first episode, you discussed the challenges of case management and records management, um, particularly with Microsoft Purview, as you've mentioned. Could you elaborate on some of the key strategies businesses should adopt to effectively integrate case management within their records management systems? Yeah, sure. I'll maybe tackle that first, and and so there's a couple of things. The the um, as we kind of mentioned in our podcast there that that you know uh, Microsoft Purview handles case management through event based retention, and so um, being able to automate some of the process. So if you have you know we've done uh, you know I've, I've worked with other organizations where we implemented um, power automate integrations and and that sort of thing around there. So if you're able to have that integration. Unfortunately, that's one of the gaps of Purview is that that automation within Purview itself for case management. Um, you you kind of need to help it along today. Um, we're hoping to have some some uh, updates into that, but there's definitely some gaps there that we want to. You know, we highlighted in our in our, vod, our podcast there around that integration, but it's you know being able to you know integrate with power automate or even some scripting and things like that is is a necess necessity at this point um i don't know Dan, yeah. uh, any thoughts yeah and i think maybe case management is one of those areas that it exposes um you know you can certainly implement it using technology within microsoft purview and m365 but it does expose maybe some weaknesses i will say or lack of maturity on some of the other pieces that I see organizations having. So, um, you know, properly tagging their content. That's, that's a big one is, you know, lots of companies don't want to do that. But unfortunately, it is a requirement for um, being able to manage cases at scale across your environment. It just simply has to be done. So uh, that's kind of where some of the AI capabilities can also help, certainly. But it's it still is a dependency um, that I see customers struggling with. And I think David is the same. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't it interesting how, uh, you know, over the certainly the, the the years that I've been in the this ecosystem, um, kind of getting involved with SharePoint back in 2005, uh, officially uh, joining Microsoft a year later, uh, that information architecture uh, mm -hmm. and, and how you build out, how you classify and how, uh, you know, the strength of your management of your data is so critical to, to search. Okay. It's so critical to security. It's so critical to AI advances yeah. and copilot and leveraging all of that, yeah. all this content, suddenly this flurries of articles out there about, uh, you know, what to do to prepare for yeah. copilot. Mm -hmm. It's kind of the old, it's the same stuff we've yeah. been saying for the last 20 years. Yeah, I 100% agree. Yeah. And, um, you know, maybe it will be easier to convince customers that, yes, this is a good thing. We need to properly tag our content. It's it's not just so you can apply a retention label. It's also so people can find it easier. It's so maybe Copilot is going to give you a, a better, well-informed response to your question. I mean, there's so many follow-on positive effects of properly tagging your content. Uh, I, I think it's going to be an easier sell now than maybe it was in the last couple of decades, I hope. <laughs> well, that's my, my a, thoughts a, on that is, is that the, you know, we've always had metadata in, in SharePoint. It's always been there. But you could still do things in folders. And there's really, you know, and, and that's, you know, what people knew. And there's, you know, we now have this carrot or even an apple, if you want to call it, that you know, you can really enhance things like um, Copilot and you can really enhance things like um, records management and even information protection in general using that metadata that you've always had. So I think that we we're seeing a lot more flurry around that. And a lot of my customers uh, are talking about this today is how do I enhance these features for us? And 
So like I said, you know, metadata has always been there, but there hasn't really been the, you know, the, the carrot to get people to really adopt it, to really see the, the benefit to it. I, I just uh, going through uh, some of my notes here too. I, I know from your show, uh, it, was, it was great to have that live. I love this kind of content. Um, you talked a, a lot on purview, which, you know, it's one of those things where I'm not, I'm not out there operating this, uh, you're working with clients directly on, uh, on purview. You talk about that. There are some gaps. Uh, I'd love to know, like, what have you identified? What are the kind of the significant gaps? What do organizations need to uh, prepare for? What are your recommendations that they need to be aware of and steps they should take? Uh, I'll maybe start and then I'll toss it over to you, David. Um, I would say, I, I'm going to say there's two kinds of gaps. One is the gap where it's maybe not built into the Microsoft purview service per se, but Microsoft has provided you tooling to kind of customize and build your own process around it, which is good because Microsoft can't accommodate every single scenario and requirement that, you know, millions of customers would have. So I understand that model. And a good example of that would be um, running a Power Automate flow at the end of a retention period. Okay, that may mean different things to different customers. Well, build your own flow and go to town and, and make it right for you. The other kind of, so, you know, I don't, I really wouldn't call that a gap, <laughs> um, but some customers look at it that way. They want it built into the service. So we'll, we'll call it that for sake of discussion. The other one is it's, it's just not there. One example I can think of that is the, is the file plan. And even though Purview has a file plan, it's for, records that are stored in M365. And if you talk to a records manager, a retention schedule and their file plan is media agnostic. It's not just for records that are in M365, it covers everything. Yeah. So some customers buy a third party file plan management tool to be able to manage their records holistically um, with integrations into the purview file plan. What do you think, David? Yeah, yeah no, and actually even to build on the last point you made, Joanne, like a huge, what I consider a huge gap, and I kind of see where Microsoft has gone with this, and I'll, I'll talk about that in a second, but a huge gap since day one, since, you know, even before it was called Purview, we had the compliance, con or it was a compliance admin console, um, you know, was that Microsoft, we're not going to do physical records. You know, that, and physical records is such a key component to every organization. Like, I'm working with an organization, every organization now that still has thousands upon thousands of boxes of physical records they have to track. And having, that was a huge part of like the early era of SharePoint too. all these vendors that had yeah. scanning technologies that, yeah. like, like, that automate that and yeah. OCR solutions. So it was all about like my, my first digitization yeah. project was when I was working for a company called EDS. If everybody remembers the old consulting company yes. in the early nineties doing uh, you know, state of California medical records and digitizing all yeah. of our documentation, uh, you know, and that was in ninety. 394 so i mean it's been around a long time obviously the, yeah. the yeah. technology that we're using but it was the idea of creating you know we didn't have pdf but creating images of the yeah. documents and then ingesting that into our systems yeah yeah. yeah, that's why we have now the syntax service formerly known yes. as SharePoint syntax. Now well, it's yeah. it's all yes. about the Microsoft syntax, and there are new services coming here from the from the from the syntax family, and this mm -hmm. is currently a very interesting field how the how the syntax family is currently evolving and also going to, together with the copilot services. So this morning I was playing around with the copilot for 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 services. I know this thing. I know this copilot since only like one week. That there is a component <laughs> for, for for services, and then I was creating my my dataverse uh, and my also my environment, and then I saw oh there are more signals to integrate. I can integrate with the Salesforce, SendDesk, ServiceNow. So what do you think? What are uh, how is the important of of backend automa uh, automation going to to increase when talking mm -hmm. about this kind of event triggers? Because we want to automate things, mm -hmm. they need event yeah. triggers. Do you work with the customers around automation like HR mm -hmm. systems or service systems, um, ERP systems? What are your experiences here? How can AI help and how can compliance help? Well, and, and to kind of build on that a little bit there, Ragnar, is, is that, you know, that's, I think, one of the 
the key things or one of the key uh, attempts to to bridge some of those gaps that Microsoft is doing is in in the SharePoint premium slash syntax space is that ability to bring content in and scan the content and build um, uh, you know the the governance components out of that data that it scans because it does content scanning. So being able to set your retention labels and that sort of thing because of the content it's scanned within and setting up those rules and those models. So that's that's huge. Um, but you know that gap you mentioned there too about integration with HR systems and stuff like that. Uh, I mentioned it earlier, but you know there's uh, I've done demos and, and implementations for organizations. I'm sure you have as well, Joanne. Um, in the sense that you know you can integrate with these HR systems like Workday, and you can integrate with PeopleSoft and things like that. So uh, a key example around that is a lot of organizations have content that is is tagged specifically to a, a particular employee. And when that employee is no longer with the organization is when the retention schedule starts for them. So that integration using uh, Power Automate, Automate Connector or, or something along that line is the ability to then use that you know, that notification that the employee has been, you know, they're, they're, re they're resigned in two weeks or they have already been removed from the system, um, you can now kick off an event automatically. So you have that integration into um, Power Auto or sorry, into Purview to kick off an event. And an event is any, you know, any occurrence in the lifetime of a document that could happen. So in this case, the offboarding of an employee. I think this also demonstrates how in... I, I'm going to focus in on records management projects, but but um, because I, I really see it there is this is why you need to have IT sitting at the table from the very beginning. Um, Thanks, Peter. In addition to records managers, because there there's so many integration points and automation steps you can take. Yes, you can do some of this manually, but it's better if it's automated and it kind of leaves the end user to you know, do their other work that they have to do. So um, there's lots of opportunity and I see even more so coming uh, with Copilot and some of these AI tools, but, you know, IT needs to understand how to leverage these tools to mm -hmm. to integrate them. Yeah. yeah. Let me ask a question here coming just uh, from Philip. From my perspective, retention labels and record management entries in 65 are, rel are relatively complex and difficult yeah. to understand and convey. Is Copilot now the, the the ultimate help to increase adoption and to understand it for the end user? Or is there still a lot of things which cannot be automated where you, yeah. you can offer a lot of value with your services and training and coaching and consulting? Um, I, I, I don't know how Copilot is going to help on the retention front. I'm not saying it won't, but I, I'm just... Mm. I'm waiting for that story to play out. Could it yep. suggest, it looks like you're working with a contract, we're gonna apply, or maybe suggest you apply a contract label to this. I don't know, that's one, that's one exactly. option. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I, I think about this a lot in ways that Copilot can help this, what is kind of a heavy lift <laughs> for most organizations is, is if, if, if you're not gonna automate it, you're relying on an end user probably more than you you are comfortable with doing so co-pilot hopefully will help out on, on that end but time time will tell yeah that there, is, there is and, oh, sorry, go ahead. and that is the the legendary bridge because in the past i yeah. was always telling listen for pure few there is the manual work where people are applying labels manually and then there is the back end where, where everything is done with millions and millions of documents yeah. where documents where machine learning kicks in and does the work Mm -hmm. But now it's 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 yeah like copilot is bridging the man yeah. and machine world. Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. And 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 that's exactly it. Like there's what I would almost call you know AI light because it's it's not really AI. It's just it's machine learning we talked about. And so some of those those gaps can be bridged um, using trainable classifiers. So being able to recognize the content. Mm -hmm. um, you know, for those who may not be aware, trainable classifier is a forms recognition system within Purview. So um, it's very similar to the model-driven capabilities of Syntex or SharePoint Premium. Um, however, the, the capability is very much not at that level. So, you know, it can, it can, it can recognize what this is maybe an invoice or it can recognize that this is a contract, but it can't tell you what the content within it is. 
So there is that capability. Um, are they going to bridge that? I'd love to see. If they're going to build on that, I'd love to see something like that. But today there's no real ability to do a lot of it's going to be you know manual being as a record manager working with the team to understand okay so you guys are working with this content and this particular type of content actually maps to this record label or something along that line and you can help them along um you know uh, how to do that um but it's it's not in the ai space today yeah, I'd say that's, that's one area important. where probably the the third party providers are are are, are leading that in, in that space, I mean, I, I've seen from just just from a conference, uh, you know, a month ago, um, two or three of the vendors that were looking at, uh, uh, you know, adding in uh, co-pilot, you know, AI capabilities into the 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 guidance already, like identifying, you know, uh, as you're building out your your infrastructure. Um, identifying where content does not is not properly classified, yeah. highlighting that so that you go yeah. in, you have to take those steps still. Mm -hmm. And so I see where that gets more and more intelligent yeah. uh, and provides even more comprehensive, like a walkthrough of what you need to go and do, like whether they'll actually be able to do it, you know, in mm -hmm. those third party tools, or they then have to go into purview or elsewhere and take the steps. But the fact is, I mean, that's, that's really where like bringing in consultants, experts helps today, maybe mm -hmm. AI will displace the need for some of that consulting yeah. to go in yeah. and review, audit, review that, and then make those recommendations. Mm -hmm. And then you go and, and take those actions. Yeah. 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 No, that's a good one. And also here, thanks here for uh, to to Philip, who brings up this point because because uh, in, the, mm -hmm. in the in the last minutes we we talked about that Copilot can help to to adjust the right labels which can be applied and assigned. Mm -hmm. But also Copilot can help to to fix a kind of broken life cycle for compliance because sometimes people are just for uh, forget to fulfill GDPR. They forget to mm -hmm. archive, they forget to edit. Yeah. And here Copilot can they listen, this document was a job application, you didn't get the job, and then after half a year it needs to be deleted. Yeah. But yeah. you didn't do it. So the right. HR a, a department or the, or the manager just forgot it. So it yeah. helps us to fix a broken life cycle, which is super relevant for compliance. 100% it is. That last question there, that that or that last comment there was was is huge. I hear with so many organizations because when you were dealing back in the day with physical records, you had you know you need a store, you had it in a in a back room somewhere, or you had to move it off site, and you only had so much space because it took up a lot of space. But these days, electronic records management or electronic content, you know, it's 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 not perceived as using up that much space. Yes, it's using up hard drive space, or the case may be. But a user doesn't see that. They don't. They don't deal with that. Mm -hmm. So, so the 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 concept is let's keep everything, and because there's no reason not to. Um, but there's yeah. so many reasons not to. You know, you, you're you're running risks of having content that's too old being referenced and things like that. There's mm -hmm. there's a reason for this this and and yeah, I can see that. You know that that comment from from Philip is 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 a good one. That you know maybe Purview or sorry maybe uh, Copilot could help with determining what data do you want to keep. It, it, mm -hmm. It's so funny, like our, 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 our backgrounds, you know, how it influences the way that we look, we, we think about these things. Uh, my, my first corporate job, I was a runner for a law firm. So I was, I would, uh, uh, you know, file documentation down at courthouses all over Northern California. Um, but I was also responsible for the long-term storage over at a facility in a storage unit right near the, the, the law firm's office. And it was very strongly impressed upon me that when the date arrived for documentation to be destroyed, how critical it was, mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. risk that was involved in having content that's supposed to be purged mm -hmm. from our records, like yeah. was not handled properly. And mm -hmm. so that's something I've like always been so that like the push now, it just seems so easy. Like when you're going and establishing your templates for your sites when you're setting up the basic functions of your SharePoint and Teams collaboration environments that you ask those questions around data retention. What are the life cycles, the data life cycle of the, the content? And then as that gets more, more complex, have those rules, but that it's just, it's fundamental mm -hmm. to that. Yep. 
But on the on the other side, this kind of complexity, Christian, what you're currently showing can also overwhelm, especially small customers. So Joanne and David, what are your recommendations? You know, how can how can you also or how can AI, so both maybe you and AI can help smaller smaller companies who are overwhelmed, who have maybe only one guy or one lady in IT? Um, I think it it's more the how regulated you are that's going to dictate the uh, the difficulty you're going to have managing this with with limited IT resources. So I think um, licensing, co-pilot mm -hmm. licensing, purview, advanced compliance licensing are your friend in that space. You simply can't manage this if you're regulated um, without some of those extra tools available to you. Um, that that would be my recommendation. I, I mean, uh, 100% of my customers are enterprise. So I, I'm speaking not <laughs> not um, from from my own experience, but that's just what I think. It's 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 more a factor of how regulated you are, unfortunately. And I don't want to miss to mention that you are currently have launched a few three weeks ago, a new uh, a video series. Yeah. How would you call it? Is it a video series? Is it a podcast? What's your official naming? But it's called Compliance Unplugged. And yes. we and, already should. And I'd like to we say we used, we used AI to create our logo. That was a lot <laughs> there of There you fun. go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Maybe what, is it, share some insights. What, what, what do you have planned? Like what's coming up next? I don't know how much you're talking about in your show, like it, it, you know, naming future guests or topics, but uh, what are your plans? So when Joanne and I first started talking about doing this, and this has been a long time coming, to be terribly honest, um, we had we want to be a little bit different because we, we've been doing this for a long time and we all heard these stories from our clients and her and I often would get together and chat about <clears throat> common things that we've seen. And, and we like, so we decided, well, we want to turn that into a conversation that others can join in on. So um the the idea behind this is we want to bring instead of you know being talking about particular you know features or components of, of purview or microsoft 365 um we want to talk about you know problems we've helped clients with or mm -hmm. um common things that we hear like that case management is something we've heard so many times that we decide well let's start with that one and you know talk about you know because i've heard both of us have heard so many times that compliance or sorry that um uh, purview couldn't do case management well in fact it can with and can do it fairly well with some help so mm -hmm. things like that um i don't know uh, that's kind of where we're, we're our vision uh do I have anything to add to that yeah um you know talk about enablement strategies try not mm -hmm. to be too happy path <laughs> on this we're we're boots on the ground right we both work yeah. with customers day in day out um so I, I think our lessons learned are valuable and, and approaches, uh, you know, we're, we're not a, a, a support, it's not tier three support, we're not doing that, but we're talking more about just practical things, I think that would help customers. Yeah. yeah. That's why I, I love, uh, you know, having these questions and thank you everybody that is uh, asked questions, made some comments on there, but yeah, that's sometimes digging into those real world scenarios you're right. It's it's one thing to gloss over, like yeah, yeah, but that's that's why we have documentation around the products. Like here's how mm -hmm. you go use it. Right. But getting those real world, um, out in the trenches, yeah, uh, you know, questions, you know, yeah, that's the best stuff. To yeah, talk. agreed. Well, it, one, I guess the last official question here, and then we've got one other topic before we wrap up here. But um, as our first in studio guest here on Guardians of N three six five Governance. Maybe if you could share your vision for the future of compliance and governance in this rapidly uh, expanding, evolving landscape. I'll, I'll start. I would like to think that a company um, has kind of a, a persona. So you're in a particular industry, uh, you're of a particular size, you're in a particular geo region. All of those factors kind of come into um, and compliance manager does this to a degree this is what we need to be compliant with but take it a little bit further right down to what are the controls that we're going to implement let's 
you know, maybe suggest something down to the end user so content is properly tagged. I love where Microsoft is going with lots of this automation capability, um, taxonomy tagging. Uh, the, the tenant level term store is your friend and I, yeah. I see it surfacing over and over and over again in all of these new toolings. So just more space around that and it's really end user facing controls, but um, in the back end, I can see how it's it's certainly going to be used to improve any company's compliance posture. Well, and it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's breathing new life into these technologies too. Like, you know, the term store was just always kind of there, but now you know, with records management is such a key component that, you know, mm -hmm. that, that ability to map <clears throat> what I know as a document, you know, SME to what the records management team um, knows as the record plan and then, you know, have auto apply labels and things like that is so key that that the the actual the term store is such a key component of that um that you know it's really breathing new life into these technologies have been there for a long time kind of going back to that a conversation yeah. earlier about metadata in general right so it's yeah it's it's there so it's, it's it's a journey that i think that microsoft is is really taking to heart um and for the longest time there too i you know until copilot became uh, a, a, a thing in the in the space. A lot of the growth that I saw in um, M365 was actually in purview and in those areas. So uh, oh, yes. I, I see a lot. There's, there's, again, we've we've talked about it already, and we've talked about it in, on our on our um, uh, our own uh, podcast there, Joanne. But <clears throat> there's still there's still growth to happen. But I think it's it's uh, it's a good path they're going down. Yeah, automatically classifying a document, automatically tagging the metadata, so end users yeah. don't even have to do that. The more that happens, uh, yeah. the better Sounds off like a dream. it's going Yeah. Sounds like a dream. Well, it's, it's all about, like, we, we say all the time that, you know, all of the components of purview will get you 80% of your, your records management, but you still need that end user buy-in. And making it as easy for the end users as possible is is really that last step and, and mm -hmm. being able to get that, that full records management story. I was just going to make the comment. I said, I, I know like where, where we are again, going, going back with the, you know, the, the history of SharePoint and knowledge management in the Microsoft ecosystem that here we're talking about a lot of the, you know, newer technology, older topics, you know, things that we've been talking about for a long time. But if you look at kind of the evolution of it, I mean, it does make sense. I mean, we're, where early on people were more worried about with uh, on-prem solutions, just keeping servers running you make sure people could get you know logged in like basics of running you know this this the platforms now that that's all moved to the cloud and we've you know handed that over to microsoft delivering that as a as a cloud service we can go and look at the actual usage of and mm -hmm. think about mm -hmm. governance and compliance yeah. um exactly. so uh you know that it's again it makes sense i'm excited to see where things go here with this next mm -hmm. stretch is more mm -hmm. and more gets automated it it uh, even even my guesses of where it's going to go and the common and third-party solutions like it's moving so much faster yeah than we even think it's moving yeah mm -hmm. so i think we're going to be surprised here in the next year no or doubt. Two. Oh, i yes. agree yeah. last but not least i would i i don't want to uh miss to, uh, to share with mid of your resources and where people can find you of course you are uh, available on many social media channels, mm. let's say like LinkedIn, but you also have your own websites. For example, yes. Joanne is is very active here on joanneklein.com. I'm going to share the link here right with you. Yes. And she's published a lot of great articles. So, so recently I've read the one around where she's comparing retention labels with yeah. sensitivity <laughs> labels. So just go to this website. There's a beautiful visualization, which makes it easy to understand about this question, which I heard so many times. What's the difference yeah. between these two label kinds? <laughs> so please go to the to her website and uh, David can be can be found here at periedeveloper.com. And I'm also going to share his website directly here. Go to the links and there. Yeah. Of course, I, I'm going to be doing a write up over on Techie Gurus that will have all of the show notes and links and a few other things that we're Super. looking at, yeah. um, and a couple of things we weren't able to cover today's show. Yeah. Um, but you always find like the monthly wrap up and the answer to that question that uh, Sunny had asked. That it's like, yes, this is a monthly show. 
Um, so Wonderful please, question. I love it. Yeah. So yeah. please uh, continue to follow Ragnar and I, yeah. and and again, watch for that hashtag, that new hashtag, which is uh, Go M three six five Gov. Um, so That's a great hashtag, by the way. Guardians <laughs> of M three six five Governance. So we had to had to shorten that. Yeah. You can't. You know, acronym wasn't going to work, but the hashtag. Yeah. 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 So, well, thank you so much. Well, oh, 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 the one last thing we'll show this, Ragnar, if you have it, um, I know we, we won't go into depth, but I don't know if uh, Joanne or David, if you saw this, uh, Redmond Magazine uh, uh, reported on this IDC report where they named, yes, Microsoft was named yeah. a leader in AI governance. Yeah, I didn't see it before years. this morning. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So uh, just a, like a factoid out there for those that follow this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, it's interesting to see as uh, Ragnar and I were talking about, I mean, it's, what's interesting to see is that, you know, uh, uh, several of these companies out there, like I have no idea who they are. This is the first time I'm seeing some of these other names. So it's always interesting to go in and look at what's the criteria yeah. that they're building this in. Like, mm -hmm. you know, look, IBM pretty dominant out there, but Microsoft is, you know, recognized by the industry, by the mm -hmm. pundits as the leader in this space. And yeah. yeah. Um, but interesting article look through again that'll be in the show notes exactly i never worked with data robert datai ku fairy sas so i know the names i i heard a few but i yeah, haven't worked with them but it's definitely a very interesting article and it's also shared here in my in our show notes yeah sas who are they <laughs> well I'm, I, you know I, I i do have to wonder about the name like one of them is what what fairly ai so what we're almost there or something or <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> so anyways just another data point to go and take a look at there's a lot that's happening in this space we'll be back in february for our next episode mm -hmm. and we've got we, i know we did we did kind of a preview show in december and we asked people like who would you love to see us interview um, from Microsoft, from the MVP community, other experts that are out there? Please provide us that feedback. Who, what, what topics would you like us to cover? Um, we're we're going to pull our audience on a regular basis ar around this, and and uh, so we have. Uh, there's a, two names that came up. I won't say who because I need to. We need to confirm them for February. But the two most prominent names from last month that that's our goal or one or possibly both for February. Yeah. Well, thank you for having having us on the show, me Absolutely. on the show. Such a pleasure. Thanks so much. It was That's awesome. Fun. Well, thanks great for being here. Great conversation. <laughs> so hope to see you. Uh, are you are you both uh, joining um, MVP Summit, March, Redmond? Um, Absolutely. Yes. All right. Sure. We'll be there. So we'll get the band awesome. back together. OK, Hopefully sounds it's good. Be a, little, a little bit warmer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, Maybe I hope so. <laughs> Um, last last question uh, from Molly. Do you count e discovery mm. as case management? You're gonna take mm -hmm. that one. Yeah. So not really, because because case the whole concept behind case management is the ability to control the records management based on a primary mm -hmm. artifact. E discovery is is strictly just the ability to find content in your environment and and being able to apply you know, appropriate litigation holds and controls and things like that. So it's an outlier, I think, in the sense that it's, it's a part of it, it's a key component of your records management story, but I don't think it really falls under that, con that category. Okay. So last comment, if both want to be reached, uh, there is a common email address, compliance.unblocked at outlook.com. You can reach both. So yeah. please contact them. They are one of the leading global experts on these topics, as you've just seen. We are, we are very happy to have them here. Yeah. Thanks for being here. Hope to see you soon. Thank in you. In a warmer Redmond. Thanks a lot, everybody. <laughs> okay, see you soon. See you at the next one.